Kodak Black, he's the rap game Lisa Simpson with a heart full of gold and a trunk full of guns. Originally hailing from the tough turf of the Golden Acres projects in Pompano, Broward County, Kodak clearly grew up around poverty, struggle, and a whole lot of straps. But unfortunately, Kodak's story is one of those where despite being given chance after chance to make things right and get out of the challenging surroundings that he comes from, he simply could not stay out of trouble. Today, he is still stuck in jail, serving his 46 month sentence for illegally acquired firing firearms. One gun was discovered at a scene of a shooting at Kodak's old Golden Acres projects, with his own fingerprint still on the gun, and two more were recovered from Kodak personally when he accidentally drove out of the US and into Canada and back without realizing that he had left and re-entered the country with these guns. After trying to blame his GPS, he was duly caught by border control. At the next left, please conceal your illegal gun. The past five years haven't been kind to Kodak Black, and in many ways, over the past five years, he hasn't been kind to himself. So today, we're gonna take a look at the many foolish crimes of Kodak Black, taking a closer look at why Lil Kodak, after being given so many second chances, just seemed destined to fall back into his old ways, and time and time again, finding himself locked up. Now, Kodak Black claims to have started rapping in elementary school, but his persona as a rapper truly started to develop when he was discovered by some local neighborhood trappers who invited him to come and start recording at their local trap house slash studio setup. Now, Kodak himself claims that he wasn't a gangster or selling drugs and was really just using that trap house as a genuine place that he could go and record music. But clearly, all the crimes that were going on around Kodak Black during these formative years must have had a big effect on him. He was wild as a child and apparently as a teen had gotten himself into many fights and breaking an end entering robberies, suggesting himself in an early website biography that he had simply started robbing to provide for himself and his family. Even saying in a 2014 interview that before he had even legally become an adult, he had been sent to juvie three times in one year and put on probation, with a later carjacking that he was involved in nearly getting him a punishable by life sentence. But in a stroke of very fortunate events, his music ended up saving him, as around this time, he ended up signing a record deal with local outfit Dollars and Deals Entertainment, who fronted up the money for Kodak to get a better lawyer to try and keep him out of jail for life. This was ultimately a success, and as Kodak was allowed back out on probation, he continued to focus on his music career, beginning to drop music under the Dollars and Deals banner and picking up an initial buzz. And let's be real for a second, right? Any true Kodak fans know from the first moment they heard him that he was special. I mean, from the very first thing that he's uploaded onto YouTube Shoulda Did in 2013, you can tell even from this first early track that Kodak has that star potential immediately. I mean, he's barely developed at all as an artist at this point, but the hook is super catchy, his vocals are very unique, and his lazy but pleasing melodies that glide effortlessly over the beat are just straight fire. Everyone knew that Kodak had something special, he would just need to stay focused, keep making music, build up a body of work, and not get in trouble. And eventually he would find himself getting enough success to at least have the option to get out of the trap for good. In December 2013, he dropped his first major mixtape, Project Baby, along with a song of the same name. Oh, just look how cute and innocent young Lil Kodak looks here. He looks like he's about to invade your home for all the Pokemon cards. Anyway, after the release of Project Baby, Kodak continued to pick up a lot of steam. Following that up with his Heart of the Projects tape in 2014, and once again a song of the same name. Now, it would take a while, but this early release actually had many of the songs that would go on to be considered classics in Kodak's early catalogue. One of these was No Flocking, a track which today sits at 222 million YouTube views, and was actually very much the original inspiration for Cardi B's hit song Bodak Yellow. This project also included his song Skirt, which of course would go on to get an enormous boost in 2015 when Drake co-signed it by dancing to the song on his jet. And Skirt today sits at a whopping 63 million views on YouTube. And so with the seeds of future classics laid in his early projects, Kodak would continue through 2015, building his momentum. Throughout the summer, we saw him collecting that bag at various concert venues, getting bigger and bigger each time. He had the summer hood banger Skrilla, which today sits at 142 million views on YouTube. And by October of 2015, thanks again to Drake's ongoing support, shouting Kodak out regularly on social media and spinning his songs on OVO radio, all of this mainstream attention culminated in Kodak Black signing a major a record deal with Atlantic. However, this announcement would unfortunately be soured by the fact that only a few days before, Kodak Black was arrested on kidnapping and robbery charges, with the list of charges against Kodak being extensive. Robbery, battery, false imprisonment of a child under age 13, false imprisonment of an adult, driving with a suspended license and possession of cannabis 20 grams or less. Apparently, Kodak was accused of forcing several people into a car against their will after he suspected somebody of breaking into his house, with one of the people involved apparently being even under the age of 13, though it is possible that they were just referring to Kodak's mental age. Now, Kodak came out around this time with an ominous tweet saying he wishes he could change 
but he's just too hood. Which in many ways is incredibly stupid, but also kind of profound, because it's almost like he is completely aware of the events that are about to unfold over the next five years. And unsurprisingly, with that attitude, only two months later, Kodak was back in trouble. Ending the year with a fresh release off the back of all of that new musical buzz, releasing his Institution mixtape on Christmas Day. But unfortunately, he wouldn't be celebrating for long, because he was apparently arrested again on the very same day, getting booked for misdemeanor weed charges. I know that one's minor, but I just wish I could say that things got better for Kodak as we went into 2060. But unfortunately, Kodak gone be Kodak. In spite of all the legal trouble beginning to brew around Kodak Black, his career continued to rise throughout 2016. A profile in Fader called him the hardest working teenage rapper in America, and his song Skirt continued to pick up steam, eventually finding itself at number 10 on the Billboard Bubbling Under charts. But whilst on the road picking up that tour bag, Kodak would find himself in trouble once again. In February, after a show at the Treasure City nightclub in Florence, South Carolina, Kodak takes a woman to his room who later tells police that he ripped off her clothes, bit her, and forced himself onto her sexually. A shocking allegation which Kodak seemingly wouldn't even be made aware of until sometime later. And in March, his song Like That Drops, putting another hit in Kodak's catalogue and racking up big streams, today sitting at 103 million views on YouTube. And clearly the major labels weren't spooked by all of the negative publicity surrounding Kodak. As the Atlantic deal began to get more public press, the label reissued his two biggest singles to date, Skrrt and No Flocking, on all digital retailers, giving him yet another big push musically. But this positive run didn't last for long, and Kodak's previous tweet about being too street to stay out of trouble would soon ring true, because in April 2016 he was arrested in connection with a suspected drug deal in Hallandale Beach. And around this time there was a lot of speculation that it was actually Kodak himself who was suspected to be the drug dealer in this scenario. That was never confirmed, but just imagine you've signed a major deal with Atlantic, they are pushing your music out on all digital platforms, you're racking up millions of streams, Drake's messing with you, and you're still in the hood selling dope from your car. Anyway, who knows exactly what was going on, maybe it was Kodak buying some stuff, but regardless, the cops had seen some kind of shady transaction going down between two cars and decided Kodak was the man to go after. But after the cops hit the lights, Kodak did not slow down. And after a brief chase where Kodak ran a red light, he eventually was stopped, with the cops saying that as they were trying to take him into custody, he was trying to hide a gun in a dumpster, with the cops ultimately recovering a Glock 23 at the scene. They charged Kodak with possession of a weapon by a convicted felon, possession of cannabis, and fleeing officers. Fortunately, he was able to bond out the next day, but things weren't getting much better from here because only the month after, Kodak was arrested yet again. This time on a fresh warrant for those charges from the previous year of armed robbery and false imprisonment. And so he would sit in jail for the next few months, ultimately missing some of the biggest wins of his rap career. With June 2016 ultimately working out to be a huge month for Kodak that he essentially was not able to take part in because he was sat in jail. He appeared on French Montana's hit song Lockjaw from his MC4 mixtape. He dropped his fourth mixtape Lil Big Pack that ended up landing at 134 on Billboard. But most importantly, Kodak Black had landed a prestigious place on the 2016 Double XL freshman list, which in my opinion is probably the most iconic Double XL cover in history. This put Kodak Black on the map along with some of the most iconic names in hip hop history that were also honored that year. I'm talking 21 Savage, Lil Uzi Vert, Designer, <laughs> not Designer. Hell, even Lil Dicky was on that Double XL freshman list, which gives me hope that maybe your boy TLR will get there next year too. But anyway, as Kodak's career was taking off, his pre-recorded projects and songs continued dropping and picking up steam whilst he was just sat in the jailhouse reading his favorite book. Eventually in August 2016, he got a chance to get in front of a judge where he pleaded no contest to all of the charges against him. And in exchange for this plea, he was given a very generous sentence of five years probation and one year of house arrest, along with mandatory community service and anger management classes. And for a moment, it really looked like Lil Kodak had finessed the system and got out of jail for good. But in the famous words of some Italian guy, just when they thought he was out, they pull him back. In. Because he was quickly finessed by the system, and after thinking he was about to be released from jail, he was immediately then booked into a new jail in St. Lucie to face an open warrant for that weed charge that he had caught the previous Christmas day. So after a brief stint there, in September, he ended up getting sentenced to 120 days for that charge, most of which the time he had already served counted towards. And so for a moment in November, it seemed like Kodak would be getting out, but then, as if Kodak Black was on some kind of nationwide tour of correctional facilities, he was then set to be transferred to South Carolina to see a judge about that sexual assault incident that had taken place in February. Here he was formally given a sexual assault charge, which is a crime carrying a maximum penalty of 30 years in prison. Now just remember that, remember that, crime punishable by 30, up to 30 years in prison, just re save that. 
in your head. It's gonna be important later. But finally, on the 1st of December, 2016, Kodak Black was freed from a South Carolina jail on a $100,000 bond. It was a Christmas miracle. He celebrated on IG with a post thanking God, his fans, his team, and his family. And naturally, after having spent all of that time in jail in 2016, after such a good run musically, the public interest in Kodak Black was reaching fever pitch. And all of this energy led into a very strong 2017 musically. Now, all Kodak would have to do to reap the rewards of this situation was keep his nose clean. But before long, he had a dirtier nose than Stitches on stage. Kodak kicked off 2017 with a bang. In February, releasing his hit song, Tunnel Vision, a groovy, typical Kodak Black song filled with his trademark infectious melodies, which he used to vaguely address some of his recent legal troubles. But in quite a marked change for Kodak Black's visual style thus far, it came with a music video that was pretty politically charged. But perhaps that played a big role in this song going on to become a resounding success. Because Tunnel Vision peaked at number six on the Billboard 100, giving Kodak his first mainstream hit, as well as clearly securing him a tidy little bag as it eventually went three times Platinum. But of course it's Kodak Black, so this good run was very swiftly cut short. Because in February 2017, Kodak Black was accused in a police report of assaulting a female bartender at a strip club in Miami. And although charges weren't ultimately brought against Kodak for this actual incident, on the 28th of February, he was arrested and held on the basis of having violated his probation and house arrest restrictions. Restrictions that he was of course given after pleading no contest to that false imprisonment case. The house arrest breaches were a direct result of Kodak merely being in that Miami strip club, Club Lex, on the 2nd of February when the bartender Said he assaulted her, and it turns out that he had also broken house arrest by attending a boxing match in Cincinnati, Ohio on February 19th, where he was seen accompanying Adrian Broner to the ring. You weren't gonna get away with that one, Kodak, were you? Do you really think you're gonna fly under the radar with your PO when she's seeing you on HBO? Both of these were probably work-related appearances that would have been allowed with prior agreement. But in these cases, Kodak had attended these appearances without informing his probation. But if that wasn't bad enough, he had also apparently failed to complete that court-mandated anger management program, having even been accused in April of getting physical with an anger management counsellor after she threatened to call the police on him after he refused to leave a lesson. A lesson he was apparently intentionally disrupting by quote, burping repeatedly. Come on Kodak, you've been given all of these chances to stay out of prison and you're literally burping your way all the way back to the slammer. Yet in spite of all of these problems, whilst Kodak was sitting in jail waiting for an outcome of his case, on March 31st, he releases his debut studio album, Painting Pictures, hot off of the success of his single Tunnel Vision, giving Kodak his best album performance to date with Painting Pictures going number three on Billboard. But if only Kodak could finesse the courts the way that he manages to finesse the charts. Because on April 26th, he was indeed found by the courts to have violated his probation, a ruling which caused his own mother to break down in court, something which Kodak himself said had a huge negative impact on him. So following that hearing on May the 4th, Kodak was sentenced to 364 days in jail for violating the terms of his earlier probation. But it's worth pointing out that he was originally facing a good eight years for this. But in this case, the judge explicitly decided to give him a second chance. Basically sentencing him to a year in jail, but giving him a good opportunity to finesse his way out. Because this year of jail was all on the condition that if he completed a life skills course whilst inside, which would teach him basic skills like writing a check, then his sentence of a year would be cut down to 180 days. And having already sat in jail for a few months at this point, along with time served, he would essentially be able to get out within a month of receiving the sentence. But of course, this would still be followed by having to complete that original five years of probation and one year of house arrest that was agreed from his last case. And in court, Kodak sounded pretty coherent. I understand what's going on right now. It is a bit reality check for me. It's not what I wanted, but what I so Kodak made it happen, he did the right thing, and he was out of jail by June the 5th, 2017. Interestingly, we actually found out that it was during this stint inside that Kodak actually converted to becoming a Hebrew Israelite, telling fans when he got out of jail on Instagram that he had discovered the tribe of Levi, thus making the decision to become a member of the 12 tribes of Israel. This revelation apparently has something to do with his Haitian descent, with him being introduced to these new beliefs by people he had met during his jail term. So, newly a Jew with a whole lot of things to do, Kodak finally gets out of jail, with a decent chunk of 2017 left, he gets back to working on that music. Closing out 2017 with Class dropping his Project Baby 2 mixtape, which went number two on Billboard and Platinum. This was followed up by a deluxe version, which featured his new single, Codeine Dreaming, which also landed on Billboard at a respectable 52. So, given another chance, after all of these mistakes, all Kodak would need to do in 2018 was behave his goddamn self. What do you think happened?
At the end of 2017, after getting out of jail, Kodak seemed to have moved out the hood to a nice new suburban neighborhood where he was settling in nicely and seemingly staying out of trouble. In fact, Kodak even went live on Instagram with some of his new neighbors who seemed mega friendly and super down to have some amazing back and forth with him in hilariously entertaining scenes that looked like they could have been a rap game remake of the Jeffersons. Oh, I gotta take a picture, send it Yeah, yes you do. Come on, take me a picture. You're gonna put me That's on that Instagram crazy. again? Because you did it before. Yeah, you went Instagram. And 560,000 views. Let's do this. Come on, do it. There it is. Um, but I still want you to start playing golf. I don't care about all this other bullshit. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna start playing golf, man. We got to, man. Look at that goddamn hair. What did you do to that? It looks like a damn wig. <laughs> Are you hurt? <here? laughs> you can't do that to you. Look at I mine. Could. You want mine? Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, okay. Show yours. There it is. This is Bosley. This is my hair. I can comb this hair. I can brush this hair. I, I can wash this hair. hair. <laughs> it's my hair. <laughs> what? This money? Yeah. This money real? He said, uh, it's, and this need to be part of a movie, right? Yeah, here. but and that's real. Look at that. I could go pay for my car with that. I think I'm, yeah, it is. Yeah, look at that money. That's real money too. He's gonna pay for my car. Twelve thousand yes, dollars. Merry Christmas. Is. Yeah, Merry <laughs> Christmas. Merry Christmas. Hey, apparently Kodak's new neighbors were so friendly they were literally begging for him to smash their daughters. Okay. It's my daughter. The one you talk to the other well, because you're going to my daughter again. The one at Florida State. I tell you when you mm -hmm. got the tickets. And she really, she said, I want to meet him. I want to meet him. I said, well, fuck you. You gotta go over and meet him. And she's yeah. gonna, she'll probably call me right back. You're sending that now? Yeah, I'm gonna send it now. She's gonna go crazy. I'm not understanding him. Want my yeah. money orange? <laughs> but beyond chilling with his neighbors, in January 2018, Kodak began to go regularly live on Instagram playing with his son. Playing slash chewing him out for crashing his little baby whip. Well, he jumped me people go kart. What? No. He ran, he ran over the tree, he knocked two trees down. Skirt indeed. Anyway, apparently in one of these many Instagram live sessions, which has since been deleted, Kodak slipped up, seemingly showing off both weed and a gun inside of his house at the same time as his child. Something that is naturally very much against the terms of his probation. So one day, whilst Kodak's at home chilling on IG Live once again, the feds turned up and raided Kodak's crib in scenes that were caught incredibly on his IG Live, with the feds even saying, give me that phone. Your phone's part of the search warrant. You're not going to get your phone back. My phone was part of the search after this, the cops ended up slapping Kodak with a whole bunch of fresh charges. Grand theft firearm, possession of a weapon by a felon, weed possession, child neglect, two counts of probation violation, and he was all up in court the next day. In the end, three of those charges against him were dismissed. That's the possession of ammunition by a convicted felon, the grand theft firearm, and the child neglect charges all dropped, apparently the result of Kodak's savvy lawyers arguing that there is no way to prove that the guns and drugs that were shown in the clip were actually real. However, he did plead guilty to the two remaining charges, possession of ammunition and possession of cannabis, ultimately leading him to be sentenced to another year. So for the majority of 2018, he would sit in jail until August when he would end up getting released on good behavior. Leaving jail, Kodak was photographed, and these images would quickly go viral, with Kodak's picture being endlessly clowned for apparently looking like a frame from the show Cheaters. But looking silly in his first photos weren't the only things going viral after Kodak got out of jail. Because that same month, Kodak Black hit the studio with the most overqualified McDonald's fry chef in history, Travis Scott, where they teased a song they were working on along with a hilarious dance move that quickly went viral. And from here, the more Kodaks threw silly shapes to this beat, the more ravenous fans just wanted to know what that hit song playing in the background was. And when that song dropped, it made a big splash because that infectious tune that was playing in the background of Kodak dancing with Travis Scott in the studio turned out to be ZZ, the biggest song of Kodak's entire career. It peaked at number two on Billboard, it went four times platinum and completely took over the summer of 2018. He had people all over the world repping that Z shit. Travis was putting on for all the ass and titty lovers worldwide. I mean, what hip hop fan didn't possibly find themselves at a summer party in 2018, yelling at the top of their lungs, I'm full of being a demon on God. I mean, you would truly have to be living under a rock or at least be in and out of jail as often as Kodak Black to have missed ZZ. So pretty much off the back of ZZ, Kodak came out of jail and straight to the top of the charts. And for a moment, it really seemed like he had the Midas touch. Because in December 2018, he dropped his studio album, which contains ZZ, Dying to Live, which topped the charts going number one on Billboard and remaining on the charts for a solid 15 weeks. Hell, we even saw DMs from your boy Drizzy Drake telling Kodak that this was one of his favorite albums of the last five years. However, once again, Kodak Black's good fortune would not last long. And all those people who believed in him, rallied around him, and hoped that he would make the most of that second chance were all let down from a great high. As 2019 would see the true fall of Kodak Black after he commits probably the stupidest crime a rapper has ever committed since Coolio tried to take that crack on a plane. 
On January the 25th, 2019, Kodak Black went to Lou's Police Supply Store, and there he purchased a SIG MPX K9 9mm handgun, a SIG P238 380 pistol, and a Century Arms semi-automatic Mini Draco Romanian pistol. Cool. He spent a grand total of $3,518.71 for all of these guns, plus 100 rounds, and a double rifle case. And I know what you're thinking, surely that's enough firepower for Kodak Black. I mean, he's out here moving like Antonio Banderas and Desperado, but apparently not, because Kodak was truly arming himself like an incel school shooter on the way to a prom. In March, he returned with the hopes of buying two more firearms and hundreds of rounds of ammunition, this time attempting to buy a SIG MCZ Rattler 300 blackout pistol. I assume getting that name because it's absolutely perfect for when you want to just completely black out in a rage and wake up having killed an entire village. I mean, this gun was described by the National interest as the deadliest gun on earth. Apparently, the shortest M4 ever made, this was a gun crafted for elite military units. Not that Z shit. But yeah, that still wasn't enough for Kodak Black, because apparently he was trying to buy as a sidearm a Glock 43X 9mm. Hell, after buying all these guns, I wouldn't be surprised if they threw in a free body armor, a couple of flashbangs, and a ghillie suit so he could be sniper gang for real. Thing is, unfortunately for Delta Force Kodak, this time the gun store got pretty suspicious. And when they got round to asking for his social security number and looking it up, they discovered his previous open cases and duly refused the sale. But weirdly, they didn't seem to realize this back in January when he made the first purchase. Having bought those initial three guns after lying about his open cases and giving a fake social security number. That's bad. And bear in mind, this is coming from a guy in a country where you can get four years in jail just for getting caught with a knife. And let alone this black ops shit that Kodak was trying to buy. Shout out all of my G serving sentences that just wanted a little cheese and crackers on the tube one time. Anyway, perhaps Kodak might have gotten away with this brazen and incredibly illegal finesse had those guns he purchased just remained safely kept in their gun case. But that was not the case. Kinnick case. Because next month, Kodak would be spectacularly arrested by US Border and Customs agents on the Canadian border. Kodak blamed his car GPS, suggesting it was never his intention to leave the US and then try and return back through Canada, suggesting he had really just been trying to find the fastest route from Detroit to Boston, and saying that the navigation system got it twisted. And I can believe that. But ultimately, the reason didn't matter. Kodak had accidentally left the United States and was trying to re-enter through the Canadian border. And this meant he would have to go through the strict border check process. Kodak was asked if he had anything to declare. He said no. And when the cops searched the Cadillac Escalade that he was driving, they found both weed and a Glock. Of course, two key ingredients in the wrap starter pack. At this point, they charged Kodak Black with third degree, criminal possession of a weapon and unlawful possession of marijuana. But to make matters worse, a Porsche that was traveling along with Kodak Black's convoy and driven by his homies was also found with two loaded handguns in the carriage. One of these was described as an AK style handgun with a 30 round magazine. That would be the old mini Draco, my friend, very cool. And yet another gun was found in the trunk along with more weed. Kodak and his boys were hauled off to jail, and this arrest caused him to miss that show in Boston that he was trying to get to ASAP. A show where apparently the crowd still assembled to join in a chorus of screaming fuck Kodak, like some sort of anti-photography protest. Fuck Kodak! Kodak eventually made bail with these charges pending. However, within only days of getting out on this drama, Kodak was back in trouble with the feds once again. Clearly that border side arrest had put him firmly on their radar because towards the end of April, whilst Kodak was performing a show in DC, the FBI and Metropolitan Police searched one of the tour buses that was parked outside the venue. The FBI once again found weapons and drugs and detained members of Kodak's entourage. But the feds also apparently attempted to enter the show whilst Kodak was performing, but were apparently denied entry by the owner. What G. Within a few days, Kodak's attorney had released a statement saying that all of the charges relating to the DC search had been dropped, with Kodak's team denying that he had ever traveled on that tour bus and denying that they had ever had knowledge of drugs or guns being on there. A smooth maneuver, sure, but within a couple of weeks, Kodak was back in serious trouble once again, because in May, Kodak was arrested just before he was set to perform at Rolling Loud Miami. He got slapped with both state and federal charges, being accused of two counts of making a false statement on a government form, stemming from both of those visits to the gun store. After this arrest, Kodak's bail was duly revoked and he would not be able to bond out, with the judge directly calling him a danger to the community. Oh, come on, he was only trying to buy the most deadly gun known to mankind. Cut him some slack. But while Kodak initially pleaded not guilty, the indictment was damning, directly accusing Kodak Black 
of falsely filling out federal forms to buy weapons at Lou's police distributors. All the result of Kodak failing to declare the outstanding cases that he had against him and using that false social security number. And apparently when it came to the open cases, they specifically asked if you have anything pending where you could get more than one year in jail. And if you cast your memory back a few minutes, you'll remember that he had that outstanding, and it's still outstanding today, sexual assault charge from 2016, where the maximum potential penalty is 30 years in jail. And I hate to break it to you, Kodak, but 30 is more than one. But from here, things went from bad to worse to complete dog shit for Kodak. Because for a moment, it looked like he was getting out on bond. But then at the hearing, the feds showed up once again and dropped a bombshell. Apparently, one of the guns that Kodak bought using his false info was linked to a shooting in Kodak's old project's Golden Acres. I mean, just take stock of this for a second. It's the start of 2019, only a few months after Kodak had had a number one album and the song of the summer. He should be kicking back doing boss shit, yet in March he is allegedly driving back to his old hood and spraying up the ops. It's crazy. The house involved in the shooting was apparently left riddled with bullets, but fortunately the intended victim, nor the multiple children that were in the property at the time, were injured. But how was Kodak linked to this crime do you ask? Well apparently, the very SIG MPXK9 pistol that Kodak had purchased previously using false information was found at the scene of the crime. But if that wasn't enough, the gun was found with a live bullet lodged in the chamber, suggesting that the gun had jammed, possibly in the middle of a shooting. But if that wasn't bad enough, the cops dusted the gun for prints and found Kodak's. But if that wasn't enough, the drive-by had apparently been done in a rented Porsche Panamera that was also linked to Kodak, with that very Porsche being found abandoned around 14 miles away from the scene of the crime with severe damage. And hell, at this point, it begun to look like Kodak's real biggest ops were the GP mother flippin' S, because after having already blamed his GPS for taking him out and into the United States when he got caught with those guns at the border, it would turn out that it was the GPS in this Porsche that would reveal to the feds that Kodak had indeed driven this Porsche through the location of the drive-by at the time it occurred. Occurred. Finally, the last little cherry on top of this very incriminating cake was the Fed saying that they had witnesses at the scene who identified Kodak. So did you see anyone at the scene of the shooting? Yeah, yeah, I did. Okay, and what did he look like? Well, you know, he looked a lot like chart-topping rap star Kodak Black. This is not a good look. And initially, Kodak's team looked like they were set to fight these allegations, clinging on to the fact that the jammed bullet in the gun wasn't necessarily proof that it had been fired, and suggesting that they had other witnesses who didn't see Kodak at the scene. But this optimism from Kodak's camp didn't last for long, because seemingly the evidence against Kodak was so damning that at the end of August, it was revealed that he was accepting a plea bargain, changing his plea to guilty, ultimately leading to a sentencing in November where he received 46 months in prison, which in some ways is a big L considering how hefty that sentence is. But on the other hand, it's kind of a win when you consider the fact that the court had initially been considering a 96 month sentence. With this heavy handed approach mainly being the result of Kodak getting in a fight whilst awaiting trial, where Kodak was pepper sprayed by a guard, causing Kodak to infamously retaliate by tugging that guard's balls. This left that prison guard in hospital and Kodak in the hole where he claimed to have been drugged, denying having any recollection of having tugged aforementioned balls. But from here, the L's only kept on coming for Kodak. In November, he was hit with two new felony charges of possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, potentially facing a harsh 60 year maximum sentence. This being for the possession of those guns in Miami after having bought them illegally. And then in March, Kodak pled guilty to yet more charges, specifically the Glock that was recovered from the Canadian American border situation, with him a month later being sentenced to one year in jail for gun possession, which would be fortunately running concurrently to his existing 46 month sentence. Kodak is still in jail today. And despite the recent release of his Bill Israel project, since his last major conviction, his momentum in the music industry has slowed down to a pace much slower than when we had seen him locked up previous times for shorter intermittent sentences. And this 46 month bid is a heavy sentence, but at the same time, it's not so long that it would be impossible for him to come out and take over the game once again. This was a heavy sentence, and really it is right on the knife edge of being too long that if Kodak keeps on getting into trouble and doesn't get out of jail soon, he might have no chance of reviving his career, or if he behaves himself and gets out in the next few, who knows, maybe he could come back stronger than he ever was. But either way you look at it, the story of Kodak Black is one of true tragedy. Because here we've got a guy who is clearly talented enough to make art that millions of people loved. And it takes a lot of emotional intelligence to be able to communicate your feelings and experiences in a way that's meaningful and resonates with so many others. Yet it seems like in spite of his musical gift, Kodak is lacking in whatever kind of wisdom or intelligence that he needed to stay on the straight and narrow, stay out of jail, and focus on the amazing opportunity that he had in front of himself. 
Perhaps it was all through lack of guidance that Kodak ended up blowing a lot of good shots. After all, Kodak famously turned down the opportunity to be mentored by Master P because he didn't like the fact that P wanted money. Now, whether or not being mentored by Master P or anyone else would have made a lick of difference to Kodak Black is frankly beyond me. But the fact is, Kodak came into the game with this incredibly extensive rap sheet right at the start. He couldn't stay out of juvie when he was a teen, and it seems like every single year since the public have even got to know Kodak, no matter how successful he has gotten, he simply can't stay out of trouble and can't stay out of jail. I would personally love to see him come out, turn his life around, get on the right track, and focus on nothing but music. But at the end of the day, all Kodak seems to know is jail. Maybe it's all the result of him lacking responsible guidance or membership. Maybe he just likes the food. Or maybe, in his own very profound and stupid words, he is simply just too hood to change. What do you think? Drop a comment below and let me know if you think that Kodak has a shot at turning his life around, or if you think he is just destined to be a trouble man for the duration of time. If you like that video, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell so that you get notifications every time I upload. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you to the patrons for supporting me and peace out.